Everybody asked us to I'm Jay Phillips. I'm the creator of Adhesion, which is basically a framework for um, creating voice over IP applications. And applications have been something that have come up several times throughout this conference. So I'd like to give my perspective on what a VoIP application is and how I've gone about solving it. Though this talk isn't very much about Adhesion, those Adhesion examples are at the end. Um, instead, I think I should focus on the changes I think that are required in perspectives for asterisk and for the greater voice community. So um, I do that through example, and this is Otto. He's the quintessential VoIP newbie. He's um, young, he loves computers, he has a strong hacker curiosity, um, he's a problem solver and he's probably single. Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> it was definitely me at one point, at least. And um, through his strong hacker curiosity, Otto finds asterisk, and his face lights up. And this is exactly like my face whenever I first found asterisk, because at this point, it's nothing but possibilities. Um, and asterisk, or sorry, Otto thinks about how he could have, say, his phone act as a universal remote and when he's being a couch potato, he can call into his hacked media center and control it with this universal remote or have his friends call in while they're over at his house or something. Or he can have, he can create a custom microcontroller that controls his door lock and he can call in and as he's coming back with groceries, unlock his door and when he's right down the street or when he leaves and forgets to lock it, he can lock it as he goes. Um, he can buy numbers in many different countries as a simple example. He thinks nothing about possibility, or he thinks only about possibilities and um, isn't yet tainted, I guess you could say. And he gets started and he hits a few snags. Without any voice experience, he finds that the telephony industry is full of jargon and um, <laughs> these acronyms are are pretty daunting to, to, uh, to newbies. And he finds that asterisk starts t really teaching him who his daddy is. Um, he gets past the acronyms and has compilation issues because his Linux distributions package manager does, has like a 10 month old version of asterisk. So he has to compile from scratch. And then on Debian, he finds he needs like libnoot 5 dev and didn't know what the hell that was and wasn't, you know, the config file didn't say that. Um, so he gets it compiled, and then he looks at the etc slash asterisk folder and sees about 70 config files um, containing about 7,300 lines of code altogether. And this isn't a template application. This is like just basically the documentation. Um, so. The telephony jargon is now compounded with asterisk jargon, but it gets past that. There's documentation around the future of telephony is a good resource. And he makes his first phone call, and he gets Allison to tell him hello world. And at this point, he's ecstatic. Um, he just did what most hackers never do, and that's get a computer to control a phone. And old Otto falls in love with Allison. And he, he falls in love with what's coming from the other end of his phone. And his hacker curiosity fell in love with his new ability to control his mobile. Even in a small way, um, Allison is uh, proof of that. But eventually, his love runs away from him, and his boss intervenes um, and gives him a real project. And Otto experiences what many people have, um, and that's how bad real projects can get. And there, there are two outcomes here. Otto can stick with the solution he's creating, despite the hostility, or the project fails and, ask, and Otto leaves the community. Um, one of those is more common than the other. So what does all this mean? I would say that a lot of fellow seasoned asterisk enthusiasts would say that, that Otto's experience was not typical, that it's actually more typical for people not even to make that first phone call and hear Allison. 
So what does that mean? It means there's, there's a serious problem. Um, and a, this, this is kind of a good example of the problem, um, good evidence of it. Most people don't have a lot of time to burn and end up spending maybe a weekend on trying to learn asterisk, and most of them give up. I speak at a lot of conferences about Ruby and open source, and I've heard many, many stories of people that said, yeah, I tried asterisk, but man, I just could not figure it out. I'm sorry, I just gave up. And the retention rate is, is less than 1%. So um, a lot of these people never saw the mailing list, the IRC channel, or the bug tracker. They're the cowboys of the wild, wild web, and asterisk didn't wrangle them. Um, and for Otto, whenever he made that first phone call, there was that, that was a little victory, and that's the little victories are what's crucial for technology adoption. And after the first phone call, things start getting pretty hairy, pretty quickly. So, what's the source of the problem? And it, the source of the problem is not in the marketing. How many of you guys have heard of this book, Crossing the Chasm, by Jeffrey Moore? Good. Definitely read it if you haven't heard of it, um, especially if you haven't read it. Um, it's basically about technology adoption, um, as exemplified by this graph, after which the book was named. And it's separated into five segments, the first of which on the left being the technology innovators. And these are the people that either create the software or they're the people that submit patches or in Stefan Wintermeyer's case, like write books about it. And beyond that is a tiny gap. And on the other side is the technology um, visionaries. And these are the people that make decisions and are technologists and take a risk by using your software. And they're the people that provide a lot of the crucial feedback that you need, especially in the project's infancy. And beyond that exists the chasm, which separates the visionaries from the early majority. And businesses kill to get to the early majority because that's where the bulk of the profits lie. And I th think if Digium and asterisk were beyond the chasm, they'd be getting a new fancy building the size of you know, Nortel skyscrapers in Dallas or the Adtran building or something. Um, one of the things that Jeffrey Moore talks about in his book is how when you're in the visionary stage, you suddenly get an influx of all of the visionaries and how it can feel like your company is, is growing like crazy and therefore you might put a lot of investment on continuing your track, but it plateaus at some point, and that plateau is basically the chasm. And a lot of variables have to be correct to cross the chasm. And that's basically the problem. Um, how many of you guys have read or heard of The Tipping Point? Okay, it's an awesome book about how epidemics spread. And epidemics can very well mean adoption of software or um, memes, and asterisk is definitely a meme. And, and it's 100% it's applicable to um, growing the asterisk community, even though it's not about technology at all. But I feel this is where the error is. Um, it's in the tipping point. I cite this book um, because it talks about what psychologists have concluded, and um, it's, it's pretty surprising. And the technologies that have achieved the tipping point and got past the chasm include like MySQL, Apache, Linux for servers. Um, I would say that all three of those are actually in the late majority, which is the second half of the curve, where people are forced to use their software because their competitors are stealing their lunch. And if they don't use their software, they'll basically die. Um, that's a good place to be because there's a lot of money in that space. Ubuntu, uh, Linux for the desktop, is still on the other side of the chasm. It hasn't crossed it yet, but I think in the next five years it will. Um, so for how to reach a tipping point, I'd like to quote someone other than, than uh, Malcolm Gladwell. I'd like to quote the enemy, Steve Ballmer, the CEO of Microsoft. Um, he's the enemy, but at least he gets it. And because he gets it, he's even more of a dangerous enemy. Um, he was once quoted as saying, I want Microsoft Windows